incredible arpeggio comes from one of the most remarkable works for classical guitar, the 12 etudes for guitar by the incredible guitar player and composer Villa Lobos. And this is the etude number one. Today we are applying this finger picking pattern to a different chord progression. Of course, I don't mean to disrespect Villa Lobos' work, rather I think it's a remarkable finger picking pattern, it's a remarkable arpeggio and I want to make it accessible to those who don't typically play classical music. One of the benefits of playing this arpeggio is that it improves the dexterity in your fingers while improving strength and dynamics and honestly it's going to take your finger picking playing to a whole new level. And of course, we are creating different levels so you can improve every step of the way. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Now, since the arpeggio is played across all the strings, we need chords that cover six strings. Now, we're not gonna be using the chords from the etude just because they are way too challenging. So let's simplify the chord progression. We have a lovely E minor seven chord, a beautiful G major six, and a lovely uh, C major 7 over G. At some point, we're also gonna play a B7 sus4 and a B major chord. There are more chords, but I'll tell you more about it later. Now, Villa Lobos didn't go easy on this arpeggio. In fact, we are plucking 16 times per measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1. Now let's break down the arpeggio into three uh, moments, three sections. The first one it's quite simple. Put down the E minor 7th chord and you want to have the thumb on the 6th string, index on the 4th, thumb on the 5th, and index on the third string. So just four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Pluck the strings in free stroke. So once you're done plucking, you wanna have the finger resting close to the strings. Now you can practice this section over the chord progression. So now the second section starts on the fourth string and we are playing eight notes. We are plucking the strings eight times. Put down the E minor 7 and you have thumb on the fourth, middle on the second, index on the third, ring finger on the first, middle on the second, ring on the first, index on the third, and middle on the second. One more time slowly. So it's eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thumb, middle, index, ring, middle, ring, index, middle. Now you can practice this over the chord progression. It will look like this. E minor seven. G major 6, C major 7, now let's put both finger picking patterns together, it sounds like this.
Now we are left with the last section, just four notes. You have the thumb on the fourth string, index on the third, thumb on the fifth, and index on the fourth. It's quite simple. Thumb, index, thumb, index, fourth, third, fifth, and fourth. When we put the whole thing together, Now once you have that, you can use the arpeggio over the chord progression. We play the E minor 7 one time, the G6 one time, and the C major 7 twice. I also like to um, add an accent on the uh, notes that I play with the thumb, so it sounds like this. I'll do it slowly. Now the awesome thing about this arpeggio is that once you have it, you can use it to play other chords. For example, I came up with this chord progression. E minor, D major 13, and C major 7. And look how beautiful. Same arpeggio, different chord progression, from E minor to D major 13, you can slide the third finger from fret number 7 to fret number 5 and you build the chord, and then it's the same chord shape to the C major 7. It's a beautiful thing to play. Now you can simplify the chord change by sliding the third finger from fret 7 to fret number 5, however it brings this scratchy noise, if you want to avoid that. Uh, just quickly lift your fingers and move on to the next shape. And of course, we can finish with a beautiful E minor chord. I love the fact that we can incorporate elements from classical guitar into our playing. Now, this is a great example. We took a beautiful arpeggio and applied it over a different chord progression. And so if you're not into classical music, you can still benefit from this incredible arpeggio, change it and use it into your playing. Now I'm gonna leave you to practice this, take it step by step, tabs available on my Patreon page. Enjoy this lesson and I'll see you next time.